Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Now Kabam posted the new update on War on the Cheaters. And there are actually some very positive, interesting and some maybe slightly concerning things in that post. But I definitely want to point out that I appreciate Kabam updating us, giving us some more details and genuinely creating a feeling that they are putting in the work. Right, so let's break down the post. Everest content. In the lead up to the release of our first long term, long form Everest content in over three years, the anti cheat team has been busily improving our mod detection algorithms using Eternity of Pain and Abyss as testing grounds. We have made substantial progress, progress earlier today. We banned over 2,000 accounts. That's, that's a lot. That is a quite big ban rate. I think most of these accounts, though, will have been extremely low level accounts. Uh, that were detected cheating in these modes by the new systems. The lessons we learned are being applied to Necropolis, which is the first piece of content we have ever released with integrated anti-cheat program in place before the launch, which is also extremely good to hear. Integrated anti-cheat program is where we need to be headed. So. We warned modding in Necropolis will be met with an immediate permanent ban regardless of your account's history or fair play or any other factor. Now let's break this all down. First of all, 2000 accounts, I bet this is also quite a big backlog that they finally kind of got to checking. And uh, this is also a great way how to clean up battlegrounds indirectly, what I want to point out. Because in order for any of these new crappy little, you know, few hundred K accounts to be able to get in battlegrounds, they are modding their way through Abyss and all the other standard piece of content, all the story content, stuff like that, in order to get some champions, some rank of gems, stuff like that. Because it's very rare when you see these modder accounts, you know, just with two stars and stuff like that. I mean, it still happens, but typically they have to kind of like do some story content anyways, and they end up going, doing their best. We all know that notoriously the most popular modder picture is the picture that you get from exploring Abyss and all that other stuff. And if Kabam does a much better job at catching them as they do that, then less of them will ever make it to the battlegrounds to ever ruin anybody's experience. So this is quite a huge thing. In addition to the fact that this is going to have some sort of integrated anti-cheat program in the first place in Necropolis, which hopefully is something that they can add to every game mode. You know, Lions Wars and Lions Quests, you know, and, and Bali and so on and so forth. So I'm obviously not a programmer, I don't know the specifics of it, but I do love the fact that, you know, there is talk of some sort of auto automated programs that will do at least some of the modern catching in the background and we will not necessarily have to wait for Kabam to do these sweeps, you know, however often they do. So all of that stuff is really, really, really good. Additional thing, thing modding in Necropolis permanent band. I think it's an amazing thing too. I think it is a great thing because if you are modding, you know, the most, I'm definitely for Kabam kind of like apping these things and making their stance clear, talking about it more. And I think this is something they should have done years and years and years ago, and we would have had completely different game and completely different um, attitude towards all of these, you know, less than savory means in the game. And now that they are taking a stronger stance, you know, I absolutely do support that. And yeah, I do think, you know, modding is definitely kind of the highest form. Like, if you are going out of your way to find a third party software to connect to your MCOC game, you clearly know what you're doing. You know, you're putting in a lot of work and effort to it. And uh, you're also, you know, completely bypassing everything this game is meant to be. Um, so, yeah, permanent bans. If you're modding in Acropolis, big thumbs up from me. You know, maybe not everybody will agree, but yeah, I, I, I'm all for that. Moreover, those wanting to complete for, uh, compete for the limited vanity prize that will be awarded for the first 10 summoners uh, brave enough to explore the content will be required to record their runs and post them on YouTube or another streaming service for us to review at our discretion. For, in, for more information about this, you can tune into live stream on Friday, November 3rd and Twitch. Now, this I disagree with. And, you know, in theory, this is actually a helpful thing because I will be trying to run through Necropolis 
as fast as I can. And obviously I have the advantage of having the setup and ability to live stream it. So I will not have to worry about recording it because I'm going to have, you know, it all up there anyways. But not everybody does and not every comp competitive player does. Not to mention the fact that, uh, you know, screen recording your entire run, given that that is going to be, you know, quite literally days of gameplay, for vast majority of the people will be borderline impossible or at the very least incredible hustle because, you know, I don't think most of the phones have remotely close to enough storage space to record, like, I don't know, um, a handful of 10 hour, you know, runs or something, however long it's going to take. And then even getting them uploaded. So your best option probably would be to try and stream it. But then again, it means the entire setting up process and stuff like that. So um, if anything, this is just going to dissuade a lot of people from trying to compete. So I think they did step a bit too far. Ultimately, they are the gaming company. It is, you know, their responsibility to check these players within their in-game data. And I haven't really heard much of, you know, where in any other game you need to record yourself and then submit your gameplay to prove that you're not cheating. And I think it's kind of taking the problem from the other way that it's meant to be, you know, meant to be addressed. You know. They are designing this. They are the ones who should be catching these things rather than everybody submitting these, you know, hours and hours of gameplay. So I don't know why they did that. I don't like it. I don't think it's something players should be tasked to do. And I say that again as somebody who actually benefits from it because I do have all the setup required to be able to comply. And by default, this will mean that there will be some players who, you know, otherwise could have explored Necropolis before me, but, you know, probably won't bother. So I'm benefiting from this, but I still don't like this. I think it's a shit thing to do. Okay, there has been an uptick in cheating this Balleron season. Absolutely agree. After reviewing the data, we believe this is the result of opening the mode up to summoners at Conqueror Progression Milestone. Absolutely. Which makes it easier for cheaters to spin up new accounts and get them into Balleron. To address this, we have started uh, running our detection algorithms more frequently, hoping that these accounts will negatively impact fewer summoners before they are banned. We'll continue to monitor this. Now, I would want to hear more about that automated system and when they are planning to implement it in Balleons, or if they are planning to implement it in Balleons. So I definitely would like, you know, those things combined. Because, uh, yeah, Balleons has not been great thus far. Right, so, on point farming, and this is the most controversial bit for a lot of players. I have made my stance clear. Don't like point farming. Some people are vivid advocates of it. I have gotten a lot of angry comments about it, but that's okay. You know, we can have a difference of opinion and that there is no need to, you know, turn hostile toward each other. Because, um, yeah, you think it's fine. I don't, you know, we can leave it there. I have explained why I don't like it. Just like many, 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 many people have written to me why they want point farm. Summoners have requested specific information about the point farming behavior. We have prohibited in Balgrounds, so we'll, we will be, uh, we will try to be as explicit as possible. The behavior we are looking to prevent is deliberately losing matches to avoid progressing in to avoid progressing in victory track in order to farm accounts uh, at lower rungs on the victory track ladder. There has been a substantial skepticism that we can identify this behavior from other forms of losing. Of course, we do not have a crystal ball. Uh, what we do, however, have is uh, data on millions of Valorant matches played every season, and we play pattern uh, and the play pattern of summoners engaging in this behavior is unique. Now, the one glaring, obvious, kind of like a brain-dead mistake here that Kebab is making, and uh, this is one of those things where, you know, something's wrong with your car, and you check every nook and cranny, you check the engine, you, you call a mechanic, and, and mechanic takes a look at your car, and nobody can find a problem, and it turns out you just, you know, didn't fill up the gas tank type of situation. It is that dumb. Because one of the things is things that will not get your account flagged for action is queuing into matches and setting your phone down on or losing farming event points in a similar way in Gladius Circuit. This is bullshit. Any half decent player 
<laughs> just get to the gladius circuit and again farm their way from zero to 100 points losing purpose zero to 100 points and and do that if they are not flagging gladius circuit point farming they might as well not bother because that is exercise in way because whilst 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 you know majority of the players that are the biggest utilizers of the point farming as in the players who do it you know for a crap ton of elders marks for a crap ton of points in order to top the participation events are capable enough to beat the bottom of the glacier circuit it's just what it is maybe not on day one or maybe not on week one but once more players enter the gladius circuit once you know top players have established themselves at like three four five hundred points Somebody wants to farm in Gladius Circuit, they will be able to do that without a doubt. So anything and everything written in here is kind of pointless if they don't, you know, adjust this. But let's see. So you will not get your account flagged for action bad <laughs> for being bad at the game and losing a lot. That's not an issue. Going going on long winning or losing streaks, legitimately getting stuck in victory track regardless of patterns of wins and losses. Queuing in the matches and setting your phone down in order to complete bi-weekly, bi-daily objectives. We do not necessarily endorse this behavior, but we are not investigating it at this time. Queuing in the matches and setting your phone down in order to farm points while losing. Unless it's done strategically to avoid, to avoid progressing, we do not necessarily do this behavior, but I'm not investigating it at this time. Farm event points in a similar way in the Glacier Circuit. This is what I mentioned, which makes this entire thing pointless. Deliberately losing one or two matches on occasion to manage Elder's Mark caps, otherwise optimize your play. Things that won't await our detection algorithms. Entering matches with weaker decks, pausing to make uh, your losing matches longer, trying to fake effort while trying to lose. Any other form of manipulating your fight data, losing a bunch of matches in a row to zero medals in order to skew the data, losing with medals to throw the threshold that would actually promote you. I have no idea how they... <laughs> Tell this, but you know, fine. It is kind of written fairly vaguely, but some of the things, okay, I get how they're gonna figure that out, but you know, uh, trying to fake effort while trying to lose. This is this is the funniest one. Like, how? You know, how are you gonna get that? Okay, fine. Especially with all the missed parries and stuff like that. Dude, some of my matches look like I'm trying to lose on purpose because I missed like four parries in a row. To this point, we have only taken action against a handful of accounts. As more data comes in, we intend to widen the net. The team is hand-reviewing data uh, this season to make sure we get it right. We guarantee no innocent summoners will get caught in the net. If you are not engaging in this specific behavior spelled out above, you have no need for concern. Finally, as with any game on Earth, there is an arbiter who sets these rules of fair play. In, this case, in the case of Milecons of Champion, that arbiter is us. It's because the system in the game allows the player to engage a behavior it does not mean it is within the bounds of the rules that we have set the same code of conduct standards allowed us to uh to address alliance war shelling and gladiator circuit wind trading empower us to address this uh point farming issue our team intends to continue to address fair play issues whether they directly involve modding or not which is something i agree in you know if majority of the people can see glaring you know ethical issues i think they should be addressed um, and ultimately, Kabam is the game that sets the rules. I don't always like that. Most of the time, I don't like that. Because, because I do think that MCOC has been, you know, horribly mismanaged in so many areas. But that is the game that we live with. Well, you know, uh, so here we are. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this. And I will catch you guys later. Bye-bye. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about